So last couple projections we have in this section is of the clavicle. So you have the AP and the AP axial. On your guides that you guys have, I believe it shows you the axial with the CR angled and then just the lordotic. We are going to be doing the axial in class because lordotic is, um, it's not frequently used and you can do the same thing with your CR angle. If you think about it, lordotic is gonna be when you have the patient against the board and they're gonna stand a little bit ways away and they're gonna lean back. Think about like a cute little ethyl coming in for a clavicle x-ray. You don't want them leaning back, that's a fall hazard. So learning how to use and manipulate your equipment to get the images that you'd like to obtain is a great quality to have. So we are doing the axial with the CR angle. This image is gonna go back to your 10 by 12 lengthwise. Make sure that you have your CR and your Bucky aligned. I'm decently sure we're gonna have to go higher than this when our patient gets in, but always start with everything super aligned and ready to go. That way you don't have to worry about doing that later on. You just touch the tube, touch the bucky. I've said it a thousand times, I'm gonna say it a thousand more, okay? I'm gonna have my patient come in and face towards the tube and just off center them so that you're gonna have the middle of the clavicle in the center of your facet or exposure field, okay? And your centering on this is just going mid clavicle. If somebody has a broken clavicle, you do not wanna be palpating hard on this. So just make sure if you're feeling, just do light touches that's all you should need for this image. And once you're there, touch the tube, touch the bucky. I told you it's no more. Bring that up. And now this is a long, thin bone. And if you left your collimation open to that full 10 by 12, it's really going to distort your image quality because it's that's too big of a space for such a small bone. It's the exposure settings aren't going to be quality. So you're going to want to actually come in quite a lot. You guys, again, I give you some, some flexibility with that as you're learning, but just make sure you have a little bit of light field here. And again, feel that jugular notch. I'm going to move over just a smidge more because if I'm through the jugular notch and through the humeral head a little bit, I know I have all of the clavicle. And then your marker can go right in this little light field that we left up above the shoulder. And get new tape if you need to. We have it in the lab. Don't let it hang into the anatomy. If you have marker in anatomy, that is also an automatic fail. So if you need to call me a little bit bigger than I do on this image, that's fine. I've done this for a while. You guys can leave it a little bit wider than me, but you do want to have that nice tight collimation so that your technique looks really well or really good on that clavicle. So I'm going to leave my patient just like this and we're going to go straight to the axial. You can just put a 15 degree cephalic angle on your tube. I would suggest moving it down before you angle it up so you don't blind your patients, but you can warn them as well. So from 90, you're gonna to wanna to go to the 105. And you're, again, just centering to mid clavicle. Your patient shouldn't have to shift their body much. The big thing here and the thing that students forget is I've added an angle on this tube. This bucky is no longer going to be aligned. You have to move this up because again, body parts travel the same direction and at the same angle as your CR. So once you're going upward with that 15 degree angle, this clavicle is still being projected upward at that 15 degree angle. And it's done that way intentionally so that you can see it more clearly and free of superimposition from the ribs and upper structures in the upper chest cavity, okay? So it's done intentionally, so make sure that you will realign your bucky, or again, you might miss your image. I'm gonna move my marker so it's back within the light field, because that also may not work. I'm gonna pretend it's there. I can grab it. I won't be lazy on you children, it's fine. Throw that back up in that light field, and that's all you have to do for your axial, okay? Make sure you know the breathing instructions on this one. This is full inspiration. So you've taken a deep breath, have the patient hold their breath and walk back. I also suggest anytime you're working with a patient, tell them the breathing techniques before you do it. Your patient might be in the middle of a breath before when you, like right when you say take in a deep breath, and if you say take in a deep breath and they're in the middle of a breath, it's gonna go and it's gonna run out of breath. So just make sure let them know I'm gonna have you taking a deep breath for this image. 
All right, you ready? Take a deep breath and go ahead and hold it. I actually kind of liked what you did there. You can breathe out and relax for a second. A lot of people do that. Did you notice her shoulders went up quite a bit? A lot of people do that and you don't need to when you're taking a big breath. So if you have a patient that starts to do that, put your hand on their shoulder and just deep, deep, deep breath in and that should help keep them rested at the side because if I bring my shoulders up or the patient brings their shoulders up, your CR will be off again. Okay, so just be really mindful of these little things. This image isn't too hard to perform, it's just these little details that students struggle with. So, just one more, right there. Okay, 